That's David Bowie on The Tonight Show with Johnny Carson in 1980. Spanning decades, Bowie was one of the most enigmatic and inventive artists in pop music. Jeff McCormick was there for so much of it. He and Bowie met at Burnt Ash Primary School in London when they were eight years old. They were friends for 60 years. And now McCormick chronicles the lifelong friendship with stories and photos. His book is called David Bowie, Rock and Roll with Me. And he joins us now this morning. Good morning, Jeff. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning to you both and good morning to your viewers. I wanted to ask you the question about David Bowie had such an eclectic personality uh, in terms of the public presence, but how would you describe him in his private life? He was thoughtful. He was, uh, he, he, he was always looking at reading something or looking into something or looking up something. Um, he was, had a, 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 a huge thirst for knowledge, and uh, he, he, he was always interested in the more unusual aspects of, uh, of life. Yeah, like, like what, Jeff? I know you two both love music, but when you're eight years old, ten years old, or what, what were some of your adventures? Well, the main thing that happened to us was that rock and roll came into our lives. Mm -hmm. uh, if you can imagine dark grey London, just uh, post-war, uh, bomb sites, whatever, uh, a pretty miserable place. Mm -hmm. And if you can imagine little Richard coming into that with sequin suits, uh, uh, with his foot up on the piano playing rock and roll, uh, it kind of blew us away and it was a huge awakening for us. You have some photos from your book that we're going to show right now. And the first one is uh, David Bowie on board the Trans-Siberian Express in 1973. So I understand that he did not like to travel by plane. Is that right? He didn't. He, he had a bit of a fear, fear at that point. He, he, uh, and I, I must say, as his traveling companion, I didn't really put him off it. Um, because uh, instead of flying back from Japan, we, we, we got a boat to uh, Siberia and went through... Uh, Siberia and Mother Russia uh, uh, to, to Paris. So it was uh, uh, a, a unique, uh, especially, this is 50 years ago I'm talking about. Yes. It was pretty freaky for the, the people that looked at us and, and, and for us to be there. We, did, we went in blindly, so we didn't really know what to expect. Yeah, here's a picture. I believe this is Ziggy Stardust, and um, I think you were along with him for that, for that ride. Um, <laughs> he was just so artistic and out there and it influenced all these other artists it would sort of make me think that he was kind of maybe weird or odd but when i've seen him in interviews and so on he just seems like a normal guy well he'd been kind of looking for this moment for a long time he'd been doing what he, he uh, he'd been doing for a, a while and perfecting his craft um you've got to remember that this is the night before he gave up ziggy stardust and, and, and returned ziggy stardust and this is just before he, he went on stage and to, to a packed audience. Uh, look how calm he is, just reading a, a newspaper. It's just <laughs> remarkable, really. <laughs> I, I wanted to ask you about when he passed away in 2016. It was a shock to many of his fans. They didn't know that he was sick. What was the thought process behind not sharing that diagnosis? Obviously, he has every right to keep it private, but was there a particular reason why he didn't want to share that information? I think the reason is, uh, is, is pretty obvious. He didn't want the fuss. Yeah. He didn't. He, he said goodbye to all his friends in different ways. Um, I was speaking to somebody in America the other day who was close to him, and he said goodbye to him in, in, in his own his own way with his own message, mm. as he did, and others. Yeah, Jeff. I, you know, when I when I was young, David Bowie was like an older artist. It was really edgy, weird stuff that I didn't really mm -hmm. get. And then as I got older, that album came out in 83, which I think you would agree was a little bit more of a pop album. And what do you make of that evolution? Uh, you wouldn't think a guy who was so artistic and edgy would want to do a pop album. Uh, are you talking about the Let's Dance yes, album? Yes, yes, Let's Dance. Um, well, it's possible, uh, and I'm only throwing this out, yeah. that... Uh, he was free of his uh, management contract at that uh. point. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, um, yeah. <laughs> Uh, but then yeah. we, we also have a photo of Bo, uh, that was, uh, Bo, excuse me, starring in The Man Who Fell to Earth. Uh, talk to us about, you know, just what that experience was like for him and, and did he enjoy it? He was highly professional. He really geared up for that. And uh, uh, we, we were really healthy. We lived, we lived well. I was supposed to be a stand-in. <laughs> um, but the fact that I looked completely opposite 
um, uh, in every way. Um, they did, they, they uh, put a red wig on me for a while, but that didn't work. So <laughs> it's great for me because I had all that time to, to uh, carry on with my new hobby, which was taking pictures. Wow. And Jeff, in, in closing, what, what is his legacy? I think his legacy to all of us is uh, to be perhaps braver. Braver how? Braver in uh, what, 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 how we think, what we do, mm. pushing the numbers a little more, gotcha. uh, never being satisfied. Well, the book is David Bowie Rock and Roll with Me, and you can find him on Instagram at Jeff McCormick Collection. It's so great to meet you. Thanks for sharing your story. It's lovely to meet you as well, and thank you.